Well, it's good afternoon to the Australians and different time everywhere else, but it's actually 6 a.m. in Jerusalem. And uh, we are here on the 22nd of June, Thursday, uh, on Global Watch to um, come together and focus on the South Pacific region. And um, I'd just like to welcome you all. It's lovely to be together again. And um, especially uh, Israel and Linda, we welcome you. And um, all the way from Kangaroo Island at Kingsgate Haven. And I just want to declare this over you, if I may, just before we, we start, and I hand over to you. In Psalm 33, out of the Passion Translation, verse 20. The Lord alone is your radiant hope, and we trust in him with all our hearts. His wraparound presence will strengthen you and us, and as we trust, we rejoice with an uncontained joy flowing from Yahweh. So let your love and steadfast kindness overshadow Israel and Linda and all of us, Lord, continually, for we trust and we wait upon you. So we just thank you, Father, for your beautiful presence. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we welcome you, Israel. Thank you. Over to you. But thank you very much, uh, Alison. Welcome, everyone. It's so good to see you all. Uh, and for those of you who still haven't met my wife, this is my wife, uh, Linda, here with me. Um, and uh, it's always good to have the support <laughs> on the side. Um, but yeah, so, um, Father, we truly want to honor you today. We, we honor your heart and your calling for the South Pacific, oh Lord. We honor the hearts of everyone who is in this call as well from joining us from all over the world. Uh, and God, we just want to pray a blessing upon them uh, this morning or afternoon here in South Australia, evening, morning, uh, everywhere else. Uh, so we thank you, Lord, to lead us on as we worship you in this time. Amen. Yes, Lord, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Worthy is the Lamb, O oh God. Holy, holy, holy. God, we do acknowledge you, Father. It's all about you, O oh God. Your kingdom, O oh Lord. It's all about you, O oh Father, and the glory that is due unto your name, O oh Lord. We bless your holy and your mighty name, O God. Lead us, Holy Spirit, Lord. Lead us, speak to and through us, O God, this afternoon, this morning, this evening, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I've been praying um, um, throughout the night as to what to share. Um, and um, uh, the Lord um, led me to share something that I've shared last week with the South Pacific House of Prayer uh, Zoom call, um, or the South Pacific well, weekly call, um, said something uh, there last last week. Um, the person who was supposed to be sharing today um, is Roy, Roy Funu. Um, and many of you uh, know Roy. He's been a faithful member of the Global Watch and part of the um, um, some of the pillar of, of prayer warriors that we have here in Australia and uh, the South Pacific region. Uh, and um, uh, something happened last night. Um, his um, his wife uh, Janet. Um, has been called to rest and for those of you who uh, who know Roy um, I would appreciate you know some prayer as we just lift him up uh, this morning and remember him so Roy couldn't make it today um, for this call but um, can I ask um, Alison if you could just pray for Roy and the Funu family um, thank you 
Well, Father, we, um, our hearts are full of worship and praise to you, faithful Father. And we, we just bless your holy name because, Lord, you, you are the keeper and the owner. You are time. And, Lord, it was precious Janet's time, Lord, to, to join you. And we just thank you, Father, that she's now in the arms of you, her beautiful saviour. And we thank you for her life. Father, we thank you for dear Roy, uh, who is going to miss her so, so much, Father, especially as he's cared for her for about 13 years, I think it is, since she had the stroke. And, um, and Lord, we just thank you for this amazing couple, Lord, who've continued to uh, worship you throughout their journey and especially these last 13 years, which would have had many challenges, Father, in so many ways. So we, we thank you for dear Roy and his family and we just lift them up to you. You are, Father, their peace. You are their beautiful comforter. We thank you for releasing your precious Holy Spirit to minister to him and to his children, Father, at this time and the grandchildren and the, the wider family, Father. We thank you that there is such perfect peace that really does pass all of our understanding it's so supernatural and we just thank you for releasing that now pouring it into into them into their hearts into their minds into their emotions and father the friends uh, like linda and israel and those that have walked closely with them we thank you for comforting them lord for pouring in your beautiful oil, your presence, Father, just to permeate any aching and any sorrow, Father, that is natural. We thank you, Lord, for turning that sorrow into joy once they've passed through this grieving time. So we bless this family, Lord. We just thank you that they, um, they are in your hands. And, Lord, there's a beautiful end to all of our lives because we are joined with you. And um, so we just give you thanks and we praise you for your great faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, uh, Alison. Um, like Roy, um, uh, many of us from the South Pacific, many people from New Zealand, uh, many from Australia have been pursuing the heart of God for this region, um, the calling of God for this region. And it's a calling that many of us are laying our, our lives down for. And, um, and God is at work in ways that we have never seen before here in the South Pacific. And, um, and, um, uh, Yes, as we pursue this calling and uh, we have seen a lot of things happening and a lot of multiplication and acceleration uh, in the South Pacific region in the last um, couple of years. Uh, you talk about the geopolitical side of things. You talk about the spiritual side of things. You talk about trade. You talk about the South Pacific region has been has been on the headlines lately, and and I'd like to call this sharing today, you know, the the fingerprint of God behind the the Pacific Australia Labour Mobility Scheme. Uh, so the fingerprint of God behind the Pacific Australia Labour Mobility Scheme. Um, about two months ago, um, uh, Sister Rachel Fanguna was here and she shared from a perspective as a worker who works among thousands of islanders who are called, not called, recruited to work in the labor shortage um, 
industries in Australia, and that's mainly in agriculture and, hospi and hospitality uh, industries. Um, so um, in, in her sharing, she, she talked mainly about this, this program, um, but you know, as well as it is a program where islanders are here to work, there's really a sense that God is doing something behind it all, that God is, is somehow in his own unique and special way is bringing all these islanders to work in Australia and New Zealand. And somehow it's been fulfilling some prophecies that have been spoken or seen over the South Pacific region in the last decade or so. And, um, and I'm so privileged that, um, that we have um, uh, Jenny Hager here with us in this call. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot there, Jenny, but I'd, I'd really appreciate if you could share what the Lord has shown you a couple of years ago when you shared up in Queensland, maybe in Caloundra, and Roy, who we prayed for before, was there, heard this vision and carried that vision ever since. And um, that vision somehow is fulfilling as we speak. So um, briefly, Jenny, if you could just pop on and, and, and you know, share, share with us what the Lord has shown you back then. Yes, it was probably, I don't know, 15 or even more years ago, I was with the Australian Prayer Network um, on an assignment uh, up in Queensland at Caloundra. And uh, in the meeting, I saw sitting up the back uh, a few people from, obviously, I found out later, from the Solomon Islands. And I didn't know, I hadn't met Roy at all, but I asked him to stand up and I gave him a prophetic word. And I told him that I had this vision and that I saw him in Australia and I saw him, it was like he was walking back across the ocean to the Solomon Islands and then he was coming back to Australia again and the people were coming from the Solomon Islands to Australia for a season and then going back again. and. Uh, I can remember I said to him, and you will build a nest here so that the eagles can fly. And I didn't know what that meant, and he didn't really know what that meant, but it was a profound word from the Lord because at the time, evidently, he had come from the Solomon Islands and he was praying, asking God, do I settle in Australia? Am I hearing you right? Do I... Uh, as it were, build a nest here and uh, so that the eagles can fly. And we know that the eagles, you know, that represents the prophetic of God, that represents um, the, the, you know, the word of the Lord and fulfilling the word of the Lord uh, that is given. And so he felt that uh, the prophetic word that I gave him was confirmation. And so he uh, decided to settle here and as you know, uh, not much happened over the next few years, you know, a few came up, but then he realized in recent years that the Lord was answering the prayer by the seasonal workers coming up, that he didn't have to worry about visas, passports and all of that for him, that the Lord was doing this and that this was the, the will of the Lord. Um, and the sense now, um, I, you know, I was um, messaging with Penny Lee this morning and uh, the fact that her message is about the importance of the Solomon Islands and the ends of the earth, that she's in the Solomon Islands at the moment, uh, uh, bringing this, this message, which, you know, she has brought to us uh, and the importance of it. There's definitely an amazing strategic shift going on over the South Pacific. It's, it's really, it's exciting to watch. And I think all those that have been praying for the South Pacific, the prayer bowls have been filling up and now we're seeing a shift. I think even with the passing of beloved Janet, that is all part of this 
shift that God is doing. Uh, and so we, you know, we bless, we bless Roy. And Roy and I had for, for 20 years or more, we felt that from the ends of the earth, there should be a, a prayer place uh, in, in Israel. And we used to talk about it and ask, should we be doing this? And, and then, of course, the Lord raised up Glenn and Coralie Robotham uh, to form the Elohim House of Prayer. And Roy and I were so relieved because we said, oh, we were only called to pray for it to happen. We didn't, we weren't the ones to be called to do it. So now this, you know, this whole relationship building between the South Pacific and Israel uh, and even your name, Israel, I mean, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. <laughs> yes, Th thank you very much, Jenny. And for those of you who don't know, I live in a sort of a duplex. I live in, on one side, Glenn Robot, and whenever he's on Kangaroo Island, lives next door. <laughs> that That is just what, you know, you can't make these things up. <laughs> it has to be God. <laughs> and... And it's it's amazing. Uh, we're looking at all this, even those tiny details, and like, wow, God, what are you up to? You know, but I think we know what he's up to. You know, <laughs> and uh, but it's exciting. I am excited, and I believe many who have labored in prayer over the years are excited about seeing what God is doing here in the ends of the earth. And um, and for those of you from overseas who are who are not you know quite familiar with the the seasonal workers program it is it is called palm p-a-l-m um, pacific australia labor mobility scheme uh, it, it helps to fill labor gaps in rural and regional australia and nationally for agriculture and select agriculture related food product manufacturing sectors by offering employers access to a pool of reliable productive workers which is usually from the south pacific and um, as of 31st of March this year, there are 37,700 South Pacific workers in Australia today. I'm going to say it again. As of the 31st of March, 2023, 37,700 workers. That is a huge number of workers coming from the islands. And for those of you who are familiar with the South Pacific Islands, um, you'd be aware that 97% or 90% of the population in the entire South Pacific region um, is Christian. Like they are at least profess to be Christians. Um, so that is um, a bit of a fact there that I wanna throw in. But in the midst of it all, again, the fingerprint of God. It's amazing. Now, I posted a video and I looked at the date um, on my YouTube channel and it was posted seven years ago. And in this video clip, it's just part of what the story, the story of what God is doing. In this video clip, I don't know how I was led, how I was led to do it, but I, I've put in an animation that has the Australian continent and then, um, and then I have dots from Honiara, which is Solomon Islands, coming to Australia, dots from Papua New Guinea coming into Australia, from Fiji, you know, there are lines coming into Australia. Um, so I made this seven years ago, and it's amazing to see how that all worked out, seeing all these arrows coming into Australia. And, um, and then from Australia, these arrows continue from Australia to Indonesia, to China, Japan, Bangladesh, all the way back to Jerusalem. Um, and um, I've watched it a couple of, uh, about a week ago, and I was like, wow, this is so prophetic. And, uh, and I looked at the Palms, the Palms website, and in the video, um, the YouTube video, they've got something similar as well. It's the Australian continent and arrows from the nations of the Pacific coming into Australia as well. And I'm like, wow, this has to be God. This has to be God. And, um, and so I'll, I'll play this, um, this two clips. Firstly, uh, let's look at the, the first one. Thanks, um, Alison. 
the person speaking in this um, in this clip is Pastor Roy. We are to shine in this nation. We are to be together. You see, this is how it is going to work. We're not only going to shine in here, but we're going to shine back there. We want our people shine before they come here. And Father Lord, we ask that you will baptize them with your fire. Jesus, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Restore them, my mother. Sing them. 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 God has carried on the arm, on the arm. Then you will look and be ready. Your heart will throb and swell with joy because of the tender mercy of our God, at which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace.
presence, we praise you. Thank you. That last line goes all the way back to Jerusalem. Um, and uh, when, when I first posted this, uh, the, the focus was on the nations of Melanesia, which is Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Fiji, New Caledonia. And the Lord is like, Israel, that's too small. That vision is too small. I'll bring the entire Pacific. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you, Alison. If you could play the, the second clip, um, is more of what God's idea. <laughs> Thank you, Alison. <clears throat> now, I, I saw this and I'm so excited. And, and I would like to call this the first half of what God is doing. There's going to be a second half. Um, so watch this space. The, <laughs> the first half and what I mean by that is um, I strongly believe in my heart and there are many people in here who strongly believe in their hearts that um, there's going to be a great and mighty move of the Lord from the ends of the earth. In Australia and New Zealand, they have a very, very big and huge role to play. And, um, and even though this is people coming from the islands to work, I can tell you of the testimonies of churches in rural Australia today, who are experiencing many revivals because these islanders are now, you know, becoming members of these churches in regional Australia today. And the churches have been springing back up to life. Many of these people from the islands who are here to work, many of them are church ministers. Many of them are pastors and priests. And uh, it's natural for them to find a church community. And as much as the Australian government wouldn't, admit this in public that they are somehow reviving the spiritual and Christianity in Australia. It is happening today, not only in the rural areas of, of Australia, but even in the cities today. And, and these islanders have brought this to this nation today. Now there are a lot, there are, of course there are some many negative side of this as well, you know, families being separated from it's other for months or even years, and this has caused a lot of social issues that we could pray into. 
but the spiritual and the prophetic side of it is, is so unique. If you watch what is happening today, there's a new church that has just sprang up in Adelaide, the South Pacific church. Um, and Evelyn could testify about that as well, started by a pastor from the Cook Islands, and it's in Adelaide. And, and this is happening. And, and it's more like the first half is, is, is going on in Australia, you know, and the Australian government is now changing its visa requirements. The Australian visa system is one of the most hardest visa system in the world but the Australian government is opening its doors to the South Pacific. With the 37,000 people in the South Pacific today, a huge bulk of that number are, are Christians. And they are working to at least open the door to permanent residency for those who are considered, you know, uh, workers that are worthy of keeping. And many of these guys who are worthy of keeping a church goers and people who are involved in churches and spiritual ministries in Australia. And, and once the door is open and these guys can be established permanently, then I believe that Australia is definitely going to be the eagle's nest. That Australia is definitely going to be the launch pad. This is where missionaries are going to be launched and it's not going to be one person doing it in his own way it's going to be a collaboration it's going to be a culmination of efforts and prayers put together and i can't wait to see this wave from the pacific moving across the globe bringing the gospel all the way back to jerusalem i believe strongly in my heart that god is doing that now as we speak that God is faithful to this calling from the South Pacific, Isaiah 43, that when the, when the ends of the earth, the coastlands bring worship and praise, the Lord rises up, you know, with his zeal to defeat his enemies. It's all culminating here in Australia today as we speak. That for me is God doing something that no human being can do. And Australia today is being led by the Labour government and we all know the Labour government. It's not very Christian friendly, but tell you what, it's almost like the days of Nehemiah again happening here today, that Australia and the Australian government is funding the work that the walls could be rebuilt in the South Pacific, and will be rebuilt from here and the battle can go back to Jerusalem. Now, as I say, I believe you are picking up what God is downloading, you know, and he's already putting in your heart as to what we should pray for. But I kept bringing this, this Pacific Island Labor Mobility Scheme because even though this is a government thing, I see God's hand in it. And, uh, and that's what I feel I wanna share with us today and to pray into it. And, and um, you know, as Alison is going to be breaking us out into rooms, you know, if you could prophetically speak into this, if you can declare multiplication, protection, if you can declare, you know, the, the Lord's will to be done and say yes and amen, yes, Lord, we want to see this happening here in Australia, New Zealand, and we want to see an acceleration and a multiplication of your work that will cover Australia, New Zealand, and from here into the rest of the world. So um, thank you very much, Alison. If you could just break us out into rooms. I think we have roughly um, 14 minutes. We'll get someone, if, if there's anything in your heart that you feel and sense, you know, that has come out strongly from your prayer room that you'd like to share, I bring that year forward. Thank you. Well, I was in room one and we were um, praying for the workers and I was just thanking the Lord because, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because my brother is a <laughs> farmer up in Queensland and uh, in the rural town that he's in, 
uh, the Anglican Church was dwindling in numbers and uh, then the South Pacific workers came in. And just as you're saying, Israel, it's just the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit has come yeah. in the church. It's a, yeah. a revival that is happening. Mm. And also it's a wake-up call uh, to, to the church in these rural areas that the Lord is using the islanders to bring in the power of the Holy Spirit and the worship that everyone just loves the worship. And I know my brother and his wife, people have given the workers bicycles and on their day off they ride out to my brother's farm for afternoon tea and a time of fellowship. So I can just share that what you're sharing, I know personally is happening in rural Australia. That's wow. Wonderful. That's awesome. Um, and, and seeing that we, we are out of time as well. Um, Jenny, since you've said beautifully, you know, can you just pray and bless our time together as well as we leave? Thank you. Well, Father, we thank you so much uh, that we're born for such an hour as this and that we are seeing prophecy being fulfilled, Lord God. And we just rejoice in all that you're showing us, Lord God, and all that you're doing. It's like a wave of glory that is coming from the islands and through Australia. And as Israel has shared, Lord, right the way back, we believe to Jerusalem. What you're doing here at the outermost ends of the earth is, is a, just amazing, amazing. So keep us as watchmen on the walls, Lord God. Keep us in intercession. Keep us hearing you in the prophetic, Lord as we are seeing your words fulfilled in this hour. We bless you, Father, and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Back to you, Alison. What a great time together. Um, it's a marker. Today is a marker, isn't it? And um, as you were saying, Israel, in a sense, Janet going at this time, it's it's in God's time frame and he's up to something amazingly wonderful. So bless you, everybody, and thank you, Israel and Linda. That was a really great session and, um, and good prayers in the prayer room, I believe, in the breakout rooms. It was great in ours. Bless you, everyone. Um, Let's bless you. each other. Thank you. 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 Thank